So in our previous lesson, we are introduced to the wave equation. So in this lesson, we are going to learn how to derive the wave equation using the vibration string. Alright, so one thing I want you to take note of is that this particular proof is going to be full of assumptions and the use of certain laws. So now let's say we have a vibrating string here tied to a point A and a point B. So you realize that when we start to cause movement to the vibrating string, it is going to take this shape. It's like consider um, when you have a string and you hold one end and someone holds one end and you start moving it. You see, there is a wiggle inside and this wiggle forms this wave profile that we have here. So you see, we get a wave profile and we want to find an equation for this wave. So that means we have to do it modeling this wave profile and in modeling whenever you want to model something we model just a part of it we can't model everything so let's say we take this part and we model this part so when you take this part um okay, so let's say there's a part we, we just took so you realize that because it's a string we are going to have a force of tension inside so we are going to have the tension here, you are going to have one force also here. Alright, but you should know that when you have the force, we have the force which acts vertically and we also have the force which acts horizontally. So here too, this will be our vertical force and our horizontal force. So let's call this point X and let's call this point X plus H. So that means that the difference here is h or the distance here is h so that means that our tension here is going to be t x plus h and here we also have t x of t so this is going to be the tension at this point we're also going to have the tension at this point as this right so and in trying to derive we have some assumptions that we follow so we have three main assumptions and the first assumption is that our motion is strictly vertical. And because our motion is strictly vertical, we ignore the horizontal component. So the second assumption is that we assume there is no resistance to bending. Bending, sorry. So there is no resistance to bending. So that means that our vibrating string is very flexible. And the third assumption is that um, we only consider small vibrations. So after this, we state the Newton second law of motion, which is um, force equals mass times acceleration. So when you state the Newton's second law, sorry, not of motion. When you say the Newton's second law, then what we do is that we try to get things here to represent this formula. So when you take our acceleration, so you should know that our acceleration is just the second derivative of displacement with respect to time. So that means our acceleration can be represented as u of t t. Then when you take our mass, you know, mass is from density equals mass over volume mass is just the density times the volume so let's just name the density rho and but you know that when it comes here because it's a vibration string our density here is generic so we have length here so that means it is the length of this particular um, string but I realize that because the vibration is very small the length of this particular string is the same as the length here so the same as this h so that means this is the representation of the mass then when it comes to our force f so you know we have one force here one force here but this force here this was here we have a vertical component a horizontal component we have horizontal we have vertical component so that means we have to resolve our tension to get the vertical component and the um, 
horizontal component. So there's our tension. So when you resolve it into vertical and horizontal component, realize that um, this will be the horizontal component and that will be cos theta. And this will be the vertical component, which will be sine theta. So when you apply the, that concept here, that means that so that means that here we, are, we have you know this is the horizontal component this is also the horizontal component and the first assumption is that we assume the motion is strictly vertical so that means that we ignore the horizontal component so they cancel out so the vertical component here is t x plus h t sine theta x plus h t and the vertical component of the tension here is going to be t x of t here and sine theta x of t you realize that to find the total force it will just be the um, sum of the upward force and the downward force but you know the downward force will be negative because it's acting downwards so that means that our force is going to be t x plus h of t sine theta s plus h of t minus t of x t then sine theta x of t so that means that um this equation here these equations that we've gotten here are very important because we are going to use them to prove the wave equation <clears throat> So you realize that our force is equal to mass times acceleration. And now we've gotten our force as T x plus h of t sine theta s plus h of t minus t x of t sine theta x of t. So that's our force and our mass is and our acceleration is so when we divide through by our h we are going to end up with something like this so can you recognize something here that this equation here is very similar to the first principle equation that we had so that means this is the same as del del x of t of x of t and sine theta x of t is equal to so this is real utt since the h cancels out all right so when we have our tension t and you resolve it into the vertical and the horizontal components we know this portion is cos theta and this portion is sine theta so you can bring t here and t here so the slope here u of x is giving us the vertical component over the horizontal component so you see the t cancels out so we have u x to be equal to sine theta over cos theta but remember that in our third assumption we said that the vibration is very small so the vibration being small means that our theta here is approximately zero and we know that for small angles cos theta is approximately equal to one so that means our u of x here is equal to sine theta so that means when we come here um, we have del del x t then we can ignore this it just means t is a function of x and t so sine theta now is giving us ux and this is equal to real utt and this can be written as t del del x u of x equals real utt so when you get here you should know that when you evaluate this and partial derivative here you're going to get t u x x 
and this will give you rho u t t. But recall that we said our wave equation is given as u t t equals c square u x x. So when we divide through by rho, see we are going to end up with u t t will be equal to t over real u x x so when we get here our c which is speed is equal to the square root of our tension over our density so when you square both sides it means that c squared will be equal to t over real so when you make that substitution here that means we have u t t is equal to c squared u x x and you realize that this is the wave equation so we've been able to derive the wave equation using a vibration string so thank you in our next lesson we'll learn how to solve the wave equation so solution to the wave equation I'm going to kind of